Hello all, welcome to UTUE section. Uh, so in the uh, last session uh, we had discussed about uh, <coughs> complete life safety and uh, fire, fire uh, prevention uh, strategies for buildings. So now uh, we had also started with uh, uh, second part of the module 5 that was uh, uh, 5 different types of special services. So in that we have started with uh, solar hot water generation. So this is the continuation of that uh, special services uh, in that also we are uh, continuing with solar hot water generation. Well, this is one of the type of the uh, system thermosiphon system or passive system. It can also be called as direct system. So this thermosiphon system as I explained in the earlier session there is a pressure difference, but if there is a pressure difference between the water supply and the water receiving point, then the water is automatically pushed, pushed towards the water receiving point. So that system may, uh, this is especially with the thermosiphon system with overhead water tank. So now you have a overhead water tank. So from this water tank, this is very, very commonly used over, all over the country. The world, like all over India, we have we are using this kind of system mostly because now uh, there is a cold water tank which is provided at around seven feet or ten feet level from the solar collector, and from there the water is supplied. This blue line is the water supply from the cold water storage to uh, solar collector, and from here there will be solar tubes which is. Uh, taken the which heats up itself and also the water which passes through that heats up the water which passes through the solar collector heats up the water and the hot water is collected in this tank here again. From here the water is pushed again upwards and then with the thermosiphonic action it is been transferred or it has been supplied to the required points of the residence or a house. <coughs> So this is again one more type of thermosiphon system where with pressurized water supply. Here maybe it is possible to use a pump, a kind of a pump to supply the water and it will also have a, a separate backup system for heating the water. So what happens here, the water in this pressurized water supply what happens the water is pressurized and lifted uplifted to the tank where you see from here from here it is again gone to the collector from the collector again comes back to this so the cold water and hot water is mixed up here and then from there it is directly connected to the shower areas and the required points of the hot water so likewise it has a also as a backup system like geysers can be provided in between hot water uh, boilers can be provided in between etc. So this is pressurized system whereas in the earlier thermosiphon system where we saw was the cold water supply is separate as well as the cold water water is supply, uh, supplies uh, at from the bottom side of the collector and the hot water is moved, moved from the top side of the collector. But whereas here it is directly going to the tank which is connected to the collector. There is one more way of uh, system that is a uh, forced circulation system. So this forced uh, that is thermosiphon system which we saw earlier. Now this is a uh, forced circulation system is the second one for systems of size larger than 3000 liters. If there are th more than 3000 liters per day, customer may choose forced circulation system. Okay. So for systems which are more than 3000 liters per day, earlier uh, thermosiphon was mentioned which is less than 3000 liters per day. So for increased kind of system forced circulation can be promoted. So customer may choose forced circulation system. These systems may also be used for smaller than 3000 liters per day capacity also where thermosiphon system cannot be used due to limitation of height of the cold water tank. So forced circulation system, 
uh, in this uh, active water heat heating or forced circulation system this can be called as active water heating the earlier was passive system and this one is active water system so solar water heating in this system the water is circulated forcedly through external source that means pumps are used for circulation of the water the water is circulated through pump in the solar collector through pump it is sent to the solar collector and there it is circulated and then stored in the hot water storage tank so in forced circulation source of cold water supply can be at any level so uh, in thermosiphon where we see saw was in the thermosiphon cold water supply was at 7 feet high level in one direct system then in this uh, cold water supply is from bottom so when there is no uh, higher level of supply is not possible then it has to be provided from the bottom level pumps has to be used by default so similarly in this also <coughs> where uh, you don't have a provision of providing uh, cold water supply at different levels at any level as water shall be pumped into the system it is recommended to use a force circulation system where source of cold water is not placed at sufficient height if there is sloped roof as mentioned in the thermosiphon system then definitely pump has to be used because the from different lower level from the solar collector water cannot be reached to the tank or the solar collector level so it has to be pumped so at that time forced circulation has to be done by pump okay so in case of large systems also it is recommended to have forced circulation system to attain sufficient water pressure and to maintain uniform water temperature so here we can see that uh, if there is no provision example this building has a sloped roof so the solar panels are placed on the sloped roof on the surface of the sloped roof so there is no provision very easy provision of putting water tank on the top if required it can be put on top of this with an extra support but if there is no provision also this could be the method which could be used so when the water tank is at lower level then the water is allowed uh, to the solar panel this is which is called as a collector so from the water tank the uh, pump is used to, to lift the water and to provide it to the collectors solar collectors from there it gets heated up and then the water is again collected in the same storage tank and then let outside <coughs> so force ex circulation with heat exchanger sometimes heat exchanger is also required for forced circulation so what happens in this so here also it is same because it is only one storage tank which is been provided there is a heat circulation forced heat circulation provided in the uh, storage tank so cold water is allowed and then it is through the pump it is supplied to the collector collector bank and from there the water gets heated up controller could be there whether to allow that water to the storage tank or not so through that controller the, it again connects to the storage tank where is there is a coil of heat exchange inside the storage tank so it also adds an extra addition to the heating of the water maybe in cold climates this is also suitable for that and then the storage tank is again connected with one backup system and then received points and goes to the different receiver points so solar water heater with heat exchange or indirect heating it can also be called as indirect heating so in places where quality of water is not suitable for direct use in the solar collector so for example here say uh, there is a salt water mostly the salt content is there in the water so or uh, water quality is not good so if in that case uh, solar water has to, solar he water heater has to be used can we can go for so force circulation with heat exchanger so what does it do in um, so in places where water quality is not suitable for direct usage in the solar collector or in cold regions where water in the collector may freeze in the night 
So, in the cold region also this can be promoted so that heat exchanger uh, helps the water to be heated, reheated again and um, solar water heater system with indirect heating is required. So, this is an indirect heating. So, users located in low temperature zone that means minimum night temperature of 2 degree centigrade and below. If anybody, if any climatic condition at the night is like 2 degree centigrade to below 2 degree centigrade, this can be suggested. Have to use solar water heater with indirect heating with antifreeze. Also with antifreeze system, uh, they are supposed to have this. So, here this is one technique where uh, antifreeze, where the water cannot freeze that system can be adapted. So, what happens in this is it can also be called as closed loop system or antifreeze system. This is one active system and indirect system sometimes it is called as indirect system also. Any of these could be called identified as uh, uh, indirect system or antifreeze closed loop active system. So, here what happens this is again a forced circulation part of a force uh, type of a force circulation system. So, here we have collector the cold water which goes comes to the pump. The pump is there is a heat exchanger in between where the heat exchanger is connected to the solar preheat tank and then the auxiliary heat tank again from this tank the water goes out. So, two types of tank can be provided where, where if you need anti-freezing of the water. So, the cold water is supplied to the solar preheat tank and also through the pump it is supplied to the heat exchanger. There could be a uh, in between intermediate coil which is an indirect kind of system. So, it heats up the water and again allows it to the solar preheat tank. Then from here, from here the water can come to from this uh, intermediate uh, um, um, heat exchanger. From intermediate heat exchanger the water is pulled out through the pump and again supplied to the controller and from the controller is again let again heating happens in the control collector. collector then at, again it is uh, 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 this uh, water is collected controlled by one controller that controller is also connected to, to the pump that con controller is connected to the pump two pumps which is directly connected and the solar heat preheat tank. So, anything can be controlled here if the water has to be not let into the con collector it can control. If it has to be stopped here only it can control. So, depending on the condition it can be controlled. So, the collector water which is connected from here goes to the heat exchanger again and from there again it goes to the solar preheat tank. So, this preheat tank is full of hot water then again moves into the auxiliary tank and then to the required services. So, due to this controller and this preheat system the collector wat water uh, might uh, uh, help in antifreeze also because the water which is supplied is getting heated already here. Maybe it reduces the amount of heat amount of uh, power to certain extent, energy to certain extent, uh, energy in the sense fossil fuel energy. So, uh, solar water heater with heat exchanger or indirect heating, if the water pressure coming from the cold water source is very high above 3 bar, it will be necessary to use heat exchangers. For thermosiphon systems, heat exchangers shall be always in the hot water storage tank itself. So, this is the previous uh, slide which has been shown is a forced circulation because we are using pump. In thermosiphon where natural pressure exchange, pressure change can allow the water to move from one point to another point. Um, there the uh, heat exchanges can be provided in the uh, hot water storage tank itself inside. Whereas, the for flows, forced flow systems heat exchanger may be inside the hot water storage tank or located outside the tank depending on the design. 
water quality and ambient temperature varies from place to place if the water is hard it will deposit minerals inside the water tubes of the collector as a result the collector tubes may get blocked and performance of the system reduces directly so this is one common issue which we have due to the water quality the uh, minerals can get deposited or silted in the solar collector tubes because even while it is passing through there is a tendency of uh, collecting the solar uh, uh, collecting that silt below so that can be blocked and uh, that can be avoided by using this so in this what happens now uh, uh, this is called as passive not active because you are again dependent on other sources of heating so uh, here cold water is connected the heat exchanger is inside the storage tank itself okay so from this heat exchanger it can be connected to the boiler also this heat exchanger say the cold water which is coming from the pump it pushes the water to the control solar collector this also has a controller from the solar collector the water comes down to the uh, storage tank in which way in which the heat exchanger is inside the solar tank and the water is again heated up from there again the it goes to the tap and required points so this is this is uh, another way of doing that where pump is there and then it goes back to the heat exchanger which is there inside the, uh, the co uh, heat exchanger is inside the storage tank and then it goes to the required points. So that is about uh, um, uh, types of uh, heating systems one is thermosiphon system another one is forced circulation system another one is with help of heat exchanger how water can be heated based on the situations like climate and uh, water quality. Now this is uh, types of uh, solar collectors. Now what is solar collector as we said there are three steps in this uh, uh, solar uh, hot water thing. So one is uh, this is solar collector and uh, then uh, it goes from here to the pipe and the storage tank. So connectivity, solar collector and the so storage tank is the three things which we have to remember. So the types of solar collector, solar collector is nothing but the solar equipment. Solar energy, solar radiation is collected by the solar. What is the function of this solar collector is? So to just to show you. I think it's missed in the uh -huh. which we see in our daily life which we see this right so huh. so what does it do that equipment do solar energy or solar radiation is collected by solar collectors absorber plates selective coatings coatings are often applied onto the absorber plates to improve the overall collection efficiency some kind of coating is absorbed applied on the absorber plate so it uh, improves the uh, overall collection efficiency a thermal fluid absorbs the energy collected so when the energy is stored in that absorber plates the thermal fluid fluid which passes through that absorbs the energy collected the most common solar collector types are <coughs> unglazed liquid flat plate collectors glazed liquid flat plate collectors evacuated tube solar collectors these three are the most commonly used solar collector types so these are just to give you the glimpse of what different types of solar collectors are available in the market so one is uh, unglazed it looks like an extruded mat with flow passages it's unglazed there is no glazing or uh, uh, surface covering surface glazing surface on top of the collectors 
so directly it can be used low cost plastic flat plate instead of glass which we see generally now uh, uh, there is one more option for low cost also where plastic flat plate is covered on the um, solar collectors this is one common type this and this is one common type which we use for most of the uh, uh, households where uh, glazed it is called as glazed insulated flat plate flat plate flat plate is nothing but these sheets which you see are flat and on top of that there is a single or double glaze there is one more similar flat one but integral collector storage there are tubes inside this integral collector storage so which heats up the water then there is another type evacuated tube it looks in the form of a tube only it will have reflector absorber type glass envelope supply tube return tube in the same thing return also is the supply also is there in this glass and insulated flat a uh, flat plate there are different things like glazing frame double glazing temperature to irrigate gasket box flow passages absorber likewise then we have parabolic uh, trough where it heats up the uh, water due to the sunshine then we have unglazed liquid flat pad flat plate collectors so now we look few of them in detail uh, unglazed liquid flat plate collectors so daily in our daily routine we use this uh, solar uh, heaters solar hot water uh, generators in our daily life but then there are so many types which you need to be understand where we can suggest these kind of solar collectors what kind of solar collectors are uh, suitable for different climates so this is first type which is more not most commonly used nowadays so unglazed liquid flat plate collectors are usually made of black polymer so they are made of black polymer polymer is the sheet which we which they used to like you can see in this image so it looks like this it is just that black polymer like a sheets it's it used it is used directly on the surface roof surface it doesn't have any cover any frame directly on some surface it can be used so what happens in this is so they do not normally have a selective coating it doesn't have coating and do not include a frame frame is not there insulation is not there at the back so they are simply laid on a roof or on a wooden support you can also either you can just apply it on a roof if it is slope or whatever suitable towards the south and uh, it can be applied easily on to the roof or on a wooden support these low cost collector these are low cost because it doesn't have much of uh, other facilities like uh, covering coating etc so these low cost collectors are good at capturing the energy from the sun but thermal losses to the environment increase rapidly with water temperature particularly in windy locations so unglazed liquid flat plate collectors they are a result as a result unglazed collectors are commonly used for applications requiring energy delivery at lower temperatures so where you need hot water with lower temperatures there you can actually use these unglazed collectors so that is pool heating swimming pool heating water pool heating there it can be used make up water in fish farms fish farms it can be used process heating applications in few industries and all if some uh, just for a process heating you need uh, water hot water so that can be used likewise where you have a low temperature of water is required there it can be used in colder climates they are typically only operated in the summer season due to the higher thermal losses of the collector in this particular type of uh, flat plate collector there is a thermal loss eventually so in colder climate they are typically only operated in the summer season so what what will be there in this 
it will have uh, two inches header pipes those pipes which will be running inside the flow will be there from one side and from the other side it is taken out so the flow channel produces even flow through tubes there are tubes collected in this the water passes through that and goes out channel entrance and flow metering slots where the water can be taken from there so likewise mostly in the pools is what they use this here and all you see this so that is connected with one particular pipe here and then from there it is drawn out glazed liquid flat plate collectors this is other uh, type of uh, flat plate collectors in glazed liquid flat plate collectors a flat plate absorber which often has a selective coating is fixed in a frame between a single or double layer of glass and an insulation panel at the back so much of the sunlight solar energy is prevented from escaping due to the glazing due to the greenhouse effect so lots of heat is not there in in this particular type of collector so what is that glaze so this kind of collector plate uh, collector is called glazed liquid flat plate collectors glazing on the top and then you see this flat plate absorber plate is a flat plate where the heat is trapped and below that there is a flow tubes water tubes are running small 2 inches or something like that water tubes are running so they are they are flat so you the absorber um, plate is flat so this is called as liquid flat plate collectors so here it has one inlet connection one outlet connection in this whole unit one inlet is there where one water, uh, water is supplied to the uh, solar collector and from one outlet collector where connection where the water is drawn out from the um, uh, supply and this is kept in the slope always so inlet collection is always uh, uh, on the top and the outlet collection is at the bottom so this has cover which protects the absorbs absorber plate and preventing loss of heat just below the cover there is a absorber plate which is usually black chrome absorbing coating to maximize the collecting efficiency this will be painted in black so this absorber plate collects the heat so this covering the covering is a glass cover so what does it do it helps in uh, preventing the loss of heat from this absorber plate okay and then it has a collector housing that means it has a box outside frame kind of a thing which is made of made up of aluminum alloy or galvanized steel uh, fixes and protects the absorber plate it can be clean, neatly protected inside then they have below the absorber plate or inside the absorber plate flow tubes can be provided where it is a it's a pipe where uh, water is allowed through that so insulation is also provided below that absorber plate so that to the bottom and sides of the collector to reduce loss of heat insulation is again to reduce the loss of heat to the bottom of the absorber plate so likewise it is protected in all sides so these collectors are commonly used in moderate temperature applications like in india where we have a composite climate most of the places tropical climates this can be used very easily and uh, example domestic hot water space heating air round indoor pools process heating applications this also can be used for wide variety domestic hot water hot water this and the next one could be used the solar radiation is absorbed by flat plate collectors which consist of an insulated outer metallic box covered on the top with glass sheet so that's what we explained in the image inside there are black and metallic absorbers selectively coated they are selectively coated with black metallic absorber sheets so with built in channels of riser tubes or riser tubes to carry water 
the absorber absorbs the solar radiation and transfers the heat to the flowing water they are 60 bas bas is uh, nothing but bureau of indian standards uh, approved manufacturers of solar flat plate collectors this has to be approved by bis so this is how it works then we have evacuated tube collector the evacuated tube collector consists of a number of rows of parallel transparent glass tubes connected to the header pipe so just to give you an idea of how does it look so this is uh, evacuated tube collector so in this system what happens the water tank is the hot water tank is just connected for the collector so the collector is also there and the water tank is also just there the water directly goes and stores into the uh, tank so you see the pipes but whereas in glazed liquid flat plate collectors it doesn't have a tank the tank is other separate uh, tank is provided separately where hot water goes into that and then from there it is connected to the uh, receiver points so evacuated tube collector consists of a number of rows like we saw number of uh, parallel transparent glass tubes connected to the header pipe there is a header pipe for that so these glass tubes are cylindrical in shape therefore they are cylindrical in shape therefore the angle of the sunlight angle of the sunlight is always perpendicular when they are kept in cylindrical the all the points gets the perpendicular uh, sunlight to the heat absorbing tubes which enables these collectors to perform well even when sunlight is low such as when it is early in the morning or late in the afternoon or when shaded by clouds so even in rainy season even in the clouds even in the early in the morning or late in the afternoon where no direct sunlight is available during those times this is well performed this kind of uh, evacuated tube collector where you see directly the uh, tubes which is running in the collector performs better than flat so evacuated tube collectors are particularly useful in areas with cloudy cold cloudy winter with wintry weathers so each individual tube varies in diameter between 1 inch to 3 inch that is 25 mm to 75 mm and between 5 feet the length could be 1500 mm to 8 feet you get 8 feet also so 5 feet to 8 feet that is 1.5 meters to 2.4 meters length also depending upon the manufacturer so each tube consists of a thick, thick glass outer tube and a thinner glass inner tube so it is twin glass tube basically it is of twin glass tube thick outer glass and thin inner glass or a thermo flask tube it can also contain a direct thermo flask tube which is covered with a special coating if they are uh, using that they it has to be covered with a special coating coating which absorbs the solar energy or a solar heat but inhibits heat loss the tubes are made of borosilicate or soda lime glass which is strong resistant to high temperatures and has a high transmittance for solar irradiation so this could be like uh, one the length could be of 1.5 meters to um, 1.8 meters 1.5 meters to 1.8 meters the size of each tube could be uh, 25 mm minimum or minimum to 30 mm maximum so this can be directly connected to the water tank so now here what happens is uh, <clears throat> so the tank is always on the higher level and uh, the it slopes down it has to be always kept in an kept at in an angle so how to what uh, in this how how it functions is it is connected with one uh, copper manifold which is also act, which also acts as a heat exchanger 
So, the cold water is let into that and it also has a heat pipe. These end cap evacuated tube, uh, tubes have cross sections like this. It has one absorber plate, flat absorber plate you see which you see and then heat pipe could be copper. Uh, heat pipe is provided from one end to the other end. So, this is a evacuated tube. After the gap, there is a evacuated tube. So, it has a double glass. Then uh, these evacuated tubes are these directly connected into this play, copper manifold. So, when the solar radiation touches this, it heats up the whole thing and the water is heated intact. Then we have uh, other type of uh, solar collector that is ICS integral collector storage. So, integral collector storage here uh, it is nothing but so we saw flat plate collector, we saw evacuated tube collector where tubes itself are visible and this is one more type where in ICS integral collector storage is provided looks very similar uh, it is like kind of a combination between flat plate and uh, evacuated uh, tube collector where the whole tubes all the tubes are covered with the frame and the box. So, it is called as integral collector storage. So, it has a collect glazing sheet on top, sealed heat enclosure cover covered with the sealed heat enclosure. Then below bottom it has foam insulation so that the heat is not transferred to the ground and then it has a heat absorbing large diameter copper tubes, copper tubes placed large diameter, it is not small, copper tubes are large diameter, then heat absorbing plate is there. So, the radiation which happens which heats up the water in the copper tubes. So, integral collector storage in the, the main advantage of this system is that they do not need controls, pumps, sensors or any other mechanical or moving parts. So, maintenance requirements are minimal. They do not need any pumps is what uh, it says. A major disadvantage of this type of solar hot water system is their weight. It is only it is too heavy. Uh, difficult to manage. These systems are often mounted on the ground. It has to be mounted on the surface or attached to the side of the buildings. On side of the building you can attach it to uh, because of its heavy weight. It, if it is uh, lying like that it may collapse. So, it has to be attached on the ground or towards the side of the building. So, one disadvantage of ICS back systems is that they can lose their solar heat very quickly at night or during cloudy conditions this is not suitable when the sun's energy is at its lowest. Roof mounted systems require a structure that is able to support the full weight of the storage tank. Now, if we are mounting this onto the floor or a wall it has to the structure should be so strong that uh, it has to bear the weight of the equipment. Then we have a parabolic trough collector. This is uh, not uh, used for household uh, size, but it is for bigger context. It is used in bigger context. It can look like this. Parabolic trough collector, the collector collects the solar energy coming directly from the sun and concentrates or focuses it on a smaller area. So, the resultant solar beam has all the power of the sunlight hitting to the dish but is concentrated in a small area so that it can be more efficiently used. Glass mirrors they use glass mirrors in the contact uh, in the concave surface. So, glass mirrors reflects 92 percent of the solar energy that hits them. So, the solar energy which is received here 
it reflects 92 percent is already reflecting uh, because of the shape. But uh, what is the use of this? The collector collects the solar energy coming directly from the sun and concentrates or focuses on a smaller area, it on a smaller area, it concentrates it on a smaller area. The resultant solar beam has all the uh, all of the power of the sunlight hitting the dish but it is concentrated in smaller area. So the dish structure must track the sun continuously to reflect the beam into the thermal receiver. So uh, it can be like continuously in concave surface like that or else it can be like this parabolic trough collector like this it can be also provided. So what happens is in this parabolic uh, trough collector, there is a reflector which is a bigger size and there is a receiver. So you can see the receiver is like smaller size than this and there is a tracking device below and a fluid transfer pipe and supporting structure. So it can be mounted like this onto the ground not suitable for small households but for the larger spaces. Because of their parabolic shape, troughs can be focused, can focus the sun at 30 to 60 times its normal intensity on a receiver pipe. So here you can see the receiver pipe is this, because of its shape everything can accumulate into that. right? So, uh, 30 to 60 times its normal intensity on a receiver pipe located along the focal line of the trough. Synthetic oil captures this heat as the oil circulates through the pipe reaching temperatures at 390 degree centigrade. The hot oil then goes to heat exchanger through produced steam through that uh, steam which is produced through that can be used to heat up the water energy, it can be used as energy. So that is about solar hot water generation system. Then this will be your second type of uh, special services that is uh, central LPG supply system. So central gas supply system or CGS is, is based on high volume gas delivery and on site gas stocking in cylinders, multi cylinder packages cyrogenic vessels with vaporizers or in special containers. So central LPG gas supply system is something that which we are looking like uh, uh, where uh, gas is supplied centrally through the all parts of the uh, building or to the city. So it is mostly uh, uh, when it comes to central gas uh, supply system of uh, uh, CGS system or LPG system. It is based on high volume gas, Vol volume of the gas delivery will be high and on site gas stocking has to be done, gas stocking has to be done in cylinders, multi cylinders should be there, sometimes cyrogenic vessels, cyrogenic vessels is something like this where you have huge vessels uh, with vaporizers and in special containers or in special containers. So the gas distribution is provided by pipeline from the central point. So the gas is supplied mostly from the pipeline to the uh, from the central point up to the final application place. Gas goes from the source from the source through high pressure manifold with pressure regulator. It needs to have high pressure manifold. It also need to have a high pressure regulator where the inlet pressure from the bulk is reduced to the level acceptable for the pipes and other components of the gas distribution system. So central uh, LPG supply system, reliable supply system which continues gas delivery. It is very uh, for gas supply it is very reliable because continuous gas supply will be there and there is no interruptions in the gas flow. So this uh, central LPG supply systems are followed in different countries um, uh, to supply the gas throughout uh, through the pipes 
underground pipes and other things. So, uh, throughout the city. So, that is a larger supply, larger gas supply. So, uh, it can be done in particular buildings also, maybe if in, in case of apartments or hospitals or hotels, anything. So, where uh, the or high rise towers, where the um, uh, um, gas cylinders which is used for households or any other purposes in the building itself cannot be taken uh, regularly from uh, different for different flows. So, there could be a common central LPG system where uh, all the manifolds or gas cylinders could be stored at one place through the pipes in the buildings. It can be taken to the other parts of the building, could be kitchen, could be uh, heating area, whatever. So, it could be taken for different supply. So, it can be looked into two levels, one is in city level and another one is in building level. So, it has lot of advantages like this. It is very reliable, no gas interruptions are there, more precise gas parameters adjustments, higher safety level because of high pressure gas storage, because it is stored in high pressure, the safety level is so much high that there should be of no leakages in the storage and uh, more precise gas parameters adjustments. You will not, the adjustment and the gas parameters uh, uh, supply is also very precise. More space at the working place, so it can be stored only at one place but can be connected to all over the building or all over the city. So more space for other works and usually lower gas cost due to high volume delivery. Due to high volume delivery, gas cost can be reduced. So, the same uh, LPG supply system could be seen in this uh, YouTube video. This uh, I acknowledge uh, uh, this uh, uh, video of uh, this video is taken from YouTube uh, uh, resource. So, I acknowledge the YouTube uh, thing too. Uh, providing this facility for showing this video. So, the whole detail of how inside the building, how the gas supply can be centralized is shown in this video. So, we can see this video, then we can uh, go to the next session. Thank you.